this video we will be discussing the two sample proportion test. Suppose we had two shops, shop A and shop B. Let's say shop A is selling 20 cars, 20 used cars, and that of the 20 cars, we'll say that 10 are electric. And shop B is also selling 20 used cars. And of those 20 cars, six are electric. And suppose we wanted to ask the question, is shop A or shop B, is one of them selling more electric cars than the other? from a statistical point of view. So is one car more prone to selling electric vehicles, uh, is, sorry, is one shop more prone to selling electric vehicles than the other shop? And so the way we would go about computing this is, first we'll compute the proportion of electric cars for both shop A and shop B. So let's say for shop A, let's say we have PA, PA, or actually, I'll just generalize and say P1, and this is shop A. So 10 of 20 are electric, and this is a proportion that's equal to 0.5. And for shop B, we have P2, which is equal to 6 over 20, which is equal to 0 0.3 as a proportion. So these are the two proportions. And so the first thing we need to calculate is what's called the pooled proportion. And so let's imagine that these two proportions came from the same population. How can we average these two proportions in a way to, to create one proportion that reflects the overall proportion of electric vehicles? And the way we'll do that, so I'll call this P pooled. This is equal to, so we'll refer to the numerator of P1 as X1, and we'll call the numerator of P2 X2. And X1 is basically equal to 10, X2 is equal to 6. And then we'll call the denominator of P1 N1, and we'll call the denominator of P2 N2. So that's how many cars. Of how many cars, uh, the top is the number electric and the bottom is the total number of cars in the inventory. And so the P pooled or the pooled proportion is given by X1 plus X2 divided by N1 plus N2, which is equal to 10 plus 6 divided by 20 plus 20, which is equal to 16 over 40. And so as a proportion, this number comes out to 0 0.4. So I'll just put a line here. So we... Okay, so we have the pooled proportion, which is 0 0.4. And so where this is going to become important is when we actually compute the standard deviation, the pooled standard deviation. Or the, so we'll call the standard deviation of P pooled is equal to the square root of P pooled times 1 minus P pooled times 1 over N1 plus 1 over N2. And so I'm going to do this calculation right here. We know that P pooled is equal to 0 0.4. So this comes out to 0 0.4 times 1 minus 0 0.4 times 1 over 20 plus 1 over 20. And so if you go ahead and do this calculation, you'll see that this is equivalent to 0 0.154 9193 and so okay now that we have these two these really three components we have the standard deviation of the p pooled the pooled proportion 
and then we have each of the individual proportion, we're going to go ahead and calculate our test statistic. And so our test statistic is actually given by z, which is equal to p1 subtract p2 divided by the standard deviation of the p pooled, which is equal to, in our case, we know that p1 is 0.5, p2 is 0.3, and the standard deviation of the pooled proportion is 0.1549193. So I'm going to go ahead and fill those in. Okay, so if we go ahead and do this calculation, what we get is 1.290994. And now, similar to previous calculations that we, we've done, so let's think about what's the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that P1 so h0 is equal to is so h0 the null hypothesis is p1 is equal to p2 the alternative hypothesis h a let's call it is p1 is not equal to p2 and so this value that we're getting here if we look on a standard normal distribution standard normal so it has a mean of zero and then let's say one standard deviation is here, two is here, minus one is here, and minus two is here. So 1.29 will fall somewhere around right here. 1.29. So the probability or the area under this curve that's greater than 1.29 is this. So I'm going to fill it in in different colors just so you can see that's equal to this area right here which if you do the calculation this comes out to 0 0.09 so let me just undo that 0 0.9 approximately now if our if our hypothesis was that p1 is greater than p2 then we would just go go we would just use this probability right here which still wouldn't be significant because typically the significance threshold is is 0 0.05 and this in this case it's 0 0.09 so because it's greater than 0 0.05 we would we would not be able to reject the null um, but in this case it's a two-tailed test because if it's greater or if it's less, so that would represent the probability right here. So we would go 1.92 minus 1.92. Let's say that falls right here. We would have to take, and it's the same exact uh, value, amount of area, which is 0 0.0983. And so if we times that by 2, we get the p-value. So the p-value value is equal to 2 times 0 0.0983 which is equal to 0 0.1967 approximately and so because 0 0.1967 is 0. 6, 7 is greater than 0 0.05 we fail to reject the null hypothesis that proportion 1 
is equal to proportion 2. So essentially what this is saying is that we cannot get rid of the null which states that those two proportions are equal. And what's that, what that's essentially saying is that we can't say that the proportion of electric vehicles in shop A is significantly different from the proportion of electric vehicles in shop B. And so that has been an overview of the two sample proportion test. Thanks for watching.